week we are all things that Samsung makes that might explode. I'm, of course, the exploding cell phone, which you are now prohibited from taking on airplanes. Joining me this week is washing machines. Sure, they just more shake themselves apart than actually explode in flame, but momentum is conserved. And area denial submunitions. We ruin the airstrip and the people trying to repair it. Authorities in France are baffled after a man walked into an Apple store and then calmly smashed every phone and iPad on display with a metal petanque ball. <laughs> Baller. Ah yes, you stupid Americans with your transient electronic devices. Do you not know that the petanque will take us all in the end? I guess busting makes him feel good. <laughs> There's probably a Napoleon King of the Battlefield joke here to do with a cannonball, but arst if I'm gonna make it. So while he was going on his little smashing spree, our suspect was ranting in French about the service he had received from Apple and how he found it unsatisfactory. I mean, if you're satisfied, you're probably not gonna destroy every floor model in a store, but that's another story. He was also wearing one cream glove while he did it. The one cream glove piece of sprezzatura is really more of an Italian thing than French. Huh. We're rapidly moving from crackpot into art installation territory. At least I'm sure that's what his lawyers will say. Engaging the youth in the democratic process is always kind of a challenge in democracies like Canada, but the Canadian government has fallen ass backwards into the one thing that will get men, specifically between the ages of 18 and 34, giving their feedback. Legalizing marijuana. News being that white men are excited about having even more legal liberties. Vote green every day. Really looking forward to when they pass Bill C-420. According to Dr. Mark Ware, the vice chair of Canada's Marijuana Legalization Task Force, they had 28,000 responses to the legalization survey that they put up online. 80% of respondents were cannabis users, 73% were male, 64% were between 18 and 34, and 8% were totally into dank nugs. 15% of respondents had one of those Pink Floyd glow-in-the-dark posters. 75% of respondents claimed to love rap, but in fact only listened to the last 10 seconds of the next episode over and over and over again. 92% of respondents reported that they had said, I re, unironically and inappropriately. So this online survey, which I remind you 28,000 people filled out, was not just like a series of like, you know, I feel strongly about legalizing, or I feel strongly that we shouldn't, or where it should be sold. It was an essay style thing where you could write up to a 1500 word response about what you thought of all this and your suggestions. And I know that there's nothing more that I want to read than 28,000 1500 word long screeds by stoned people. That sounds great. They've hired a company to look at them. Those poor, poor people. So not only everyone involved in the production of these essays was stoned, but now everyone involved in their analysis will also need to be stoned. Yeah, but like, you know, it's basically because sort of, you know, you know, because like it, you know, sort of is, but you know, it is, it is, you know, you know? Uh, excuse me, sir, where is the pile for essays about why Flamin' Hot Cheetos are better than all dressed chips? Okay, so first off, the hippies will love it because it's organic and totally recyclable and green, and then government will love it because they can tax it, and then business will love it because they can create jobs and do all- wait, this one's about cocaine. A local watering hole named Hanson's Bar in Robinson, North Dakota, has scooped the trademark for Geographical Center of North America from a nearby town called Rugby because rugby had accidentally let it lapse, so they took it, and now the people in rugby are annoyed. It's a big feud. No, Kathleen, we're doing feed dump, not corp line. Robinson is about 85 miles north of rugby, which is like 140 kilometers. That's an awfully large error bar for something as precise as the geographical center of North America. Have we lost that much Arctic ice? Well, Cameron, that's actually a very interesting question because patrons of the bar say that their town should be the center because of the melting ice caps. But keep in mind that how they decided on the geographical center of North America was 90 years ago, a federal mathematician stuck a pin in a cardboard map of the continent and recorded the coordinates of where it balanced on his finger. This is not exactly scientific to begin with. Well, luckily the Mercator projection of North America is 100% accurate and cardboard is a notoriously homogenous substance. For those of you unaware, Cameron was being sarcastic.
Well, actually, I think he was being facetious. In case you are wondering, Alex was being 100% a shit. This has been your Feed Dump Sarcasm Guide. What the hell were we talking about just now? Something stupid and irrelevant that's fighting to take up neurons in my brain. Well, that's a switch. It's not irrelevant to the people of Rugby, North Dakota. They have a 21-foot-tall obelisk in the center of their town declaring them the geographical center of North America. And now they'll have to tear it down, I guess. They could repurpose that obelisk. What else could they be known for? Well, they're already known for letting trademarks lapse. Hmm. A cautionary tale for the ages. And on that sad note, unfortunately, we must call this episode of Feed Dump to a close. But remember, there may be better sources of news, but they don't have this hat, which is not in fact a hat. It is a diadem kroon, or some sort of, like, Netherlands thing. I mean, it's made in China, but it's for the Netherlands. And it fits over the hat I'm currently wearing. They don't have this double hat. The Magneto Teabag.